People ask me, why do you do it? What makes you want to fly and share it with the world? And if I answer them honestly, I would say, I don't know. It's just something you're born with. My childhood is filled with memories on Navy bases. The sound, the smell, and the feel of an afterburner on takeoff. I always knew I wanted to be a pilot, but missed out on having that relationship with But what if you were given a chance at that? What if you were handed a gift of digitized 8mm and cockpit voice recordings? I'm not that sure. I gotta take them down. Go ahead, Taylor. Uh, we're gonna head out uh, as soon as we get around. Naval Aviator and OG YouTuber. I knew I had to put this puzzle together and knew exactly who could help me do it. Commander Steve Cobra Queen, Rear Admiral and former Blue Angel number one, Denny Rattler Wisely. Come along on this multi-part series as we dive into the Duck Chronicles and try to tell the stories that the OG YouTuber never got to. When you're, you know, when you're getting shot at every day, sure. uh, drinking's an outlet. You know, when I you bet. Come, we, so we, we uh, had good, good times together uh, on cruise. We, we, we'd go to the bar, you know. We'd come off the line after, you know, 30 or 40, 40 days, you know, look out at the bar, you know, Stingers was the, the choice drink. There were 25 cents for, for, I think that's what it was, 25 cents, maybe 50. I'm not sure, but it was, it was dirt cheap. And we'd go in the, the bar and, and uh, close the bar and the, and the bartender said, I'm sorry, I've got to go home, you know, and <laughs> you'd get the duty officer that some Lieutenant uh, from the base kind of come in, try and throw us out at the end. And, and that didn't go so well. So, we would, we would get the bartender. We made a deal with the bartender. He could close the bar, but we had him make a whole pitcher of stingers for us. And, you know, I mean, the people who lived on the base hated when the carriers came in. You know, they, <laughs> yeah. they just steered clear of the clubs. They, they had two clubs at, at QB Point. They had the, the, uh, up, the one up overlooking the, the runway. Then they had the, uh, what we call the Black Shoe Club down at the, where all the destroyers and stuff would come in. And we'd go down there sometimes to be, be a, have a nicer, quieter night. And then he'd go out to a long apo out, outside the gate. And the bars, were, it was a, a different bar every every 50 feet or so. And one, one you go in there and the Filipinos could really sing. You know, one would be sound like Frank Sinatra. You know, another another one would be Willie Nelson bar, or whatever. You know, and, and they were they were just fun and had you know beers and you're dirt cheap and yeah, you, you had to be back in through the gate by midnight or otherwise you were stuck out in town. Mm -hmm. We never got stuck out in town. Yeah. I don't know if you remember May tenth, nineteen seventy two. You guys um, looks like flew a day combat mission. I talked to. That's Commander Driscoll a couple months ago, and he talked about that day for obvious reasons, right? Um, were yeah. you guys flying with the yeah, you know, recall? You know, no, we, it was a it was a multi carrier strike, and I will tell you, we talk about you know I said earlier, timing is everything. You, you know, that, that first MIG engagement I had was just a matter of timing at the being at the right spot, the right moment to have it happen. Um, we were a two carrier strike group on that particular May tenth day. And they and and they they were on the constellation, and and by the way they they had already been up in Japan and were going to go home, and got called back. Um, so they, they would never have had that engagement wow. if, if they had, yeah they got called back to Yankee Station. They were they were elite. They were that Connie had the uh, Alpha Strike Group, which you know is about like a twenty five airplanes with fighters and bombers and stuff going in. And they were in right before us. They, they got all that MIG engagement. We were like five minutes behind them, and it was all over. Oh you wow! Know? You know, we we, you know, we we hit the targets, you know, but there was no no more MIGs to shoot. <laughs> you just missed Dude, it. You, you just know? missed all the fun, huh? <laughs> by, yeah, by five minutes, you know. Wow. This looks like combat now, or, or dropping bombs, or something. Yeah, it looks like, yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure where, it, 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 I'm not sure what the target is there. Like, it's kind of hard to tell. Sure. But it looks like a, it looks like a bombing run and pulling off.
What were your typical missions during this cruise? Was it a combination of bombing and air support and cover or, or what? Yeah, we, we, we would, squadrons would take turns being bombers uh, or, or fighters, you know, fighter escort, TARCAP, target combat air patrol. So we, we, we would, I think we'd take it a week at a time. And, uh, you know, so it, it just got in a, in a good routine, you know, good for your ordnance men. Uh, for if you're loading bombs and stuff, just get, get used to it, not to switch them back and forth every other day. So I, I, my recollection is about a week at a time we were bombers and a week at a time we were um, combat air patrol guys. So can you describe a bombing run? You start high, I'm assuming. You come in at some angle, yeah, we, dive. We would, and... um, we would normally come in, come in low and pop up to about 12,000 feet hmm. and, then, and then roll in and release our bombs at 4,000 and then and pull out. You, you, put, you roll in and you put your pipper uh, below, closer to you than the target because as, as, you're, as you're coming downhill, that, that pipper um, is walking up towards the target. So you don't want it to be on the target until you get to that 4,000 feet to drop. Mm. We had we had you know targets all the way all the way up the coast. You know, some were harder than others. Um, you know, you got Vin was right right on the coast to come in and, and hit hit that and, and, and get the hell out of there. And get back out, feet wet. Feet, feet wet was was the you know was, you, as soon as you got a few miles off the coast, you knew you were home free. Mm. Um, you, you know, even if you'd been shot up or whatever. You, you know, you could get picked up. You you got those destroyers with the helos aboard or whatever. So, getting back out feet was important. And um, so, depending on the, on the where the target is, you Vin and Than Hua uh, were right close to the coast. And so you you'd go in and and, and kind of go past the target um, and roll roll in going towards the sea. And you would drop your bombs and just keep on going um, so that, that worked pretty pretty well but, um, looks like coming back to the ship here yeah. Any uh, memorable stories, combat-wise, that um, where you were flying with him that you remember? Well, I just I just remember being, him being my wingie a, a whole bunch of times, and, and you know going going off, we'd rendezvous, and you know he'd be right there, and we would have these long flights either coming in from the mountains of, of Laos uh, to hit targets near Hanoi, or we hit targets near Vin. We worked on uh, Than Hua was Than Hua was a, a big target area. Uh, we, we bombed the hell out of San Juan a bunch of times.
cat on a cat shot, well, we would we could carry 12 500 pound bombs, 6,000 pounds of bombs. So a, your cat shot is 58,000 pound cat shot, which means that thing is one giant kick in the butt. Mm. In the F4, you had to pull the stick back and, and kind of lock your lock your arm on, on your right leg and and hold it at a kind of a halfway position. And if you went off at that 58,000 pound thing. Um, and you had, you got a little nervous and went a little bit further back on the stick. That that thing would rotate the airplane like 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 mm. this, and so you're going vertical. And I had it happen to me at night, and I go, hang on, I forget who was in my back seat. I had a stick full forward, and nothing's happening. And finally, the wing starts to fall to fall mm. off, and um, it falls off, and the nose drops. And I just kind of let it go, and, and you know, got the thing leveled off, probably about 50 feet off the water, and and recover out there, but scared the bejesus out of me. Oh yeah. And the guy in the back seat, I said, "Don't punch out. I got it." You know. Well, some more. Looks like cockpit view here of a cat shot yep exactly the guy was a youtuber before there was YouTube, right? He's taking that Super 8 everywhere and his 35 millimeter camera everywhere yeah. and just taking pictures of everything he could. And so yeah. it's just been a real blessing for me to find all this and, and be able to live a little bit and, and learn a little bit more about him um, that I didn't know. There was always kind of this black hole in my life about, you know, what happens when he's on the ship? What's combat like? What's flying an F4 like, you know? And sitting down and talking to folks like you and seeing these 8 millimeter, it's really sort of filled in those those blank spaces for me you know if you will so i feel like i kind of have a, a whole picture now and i understand where i i get some of my uh my desire to fly and to take pictures and share it with the world i think it, you're just born with it right i, I can't help it yeah. <laughs> good on you yeah I remember um, catting off uh, probably with your dad on, on a night hop going with, doing dumb things like we're just drop bombs on a tack and pause it off in Laos. It was a sortie war, you know, it was McNamara and, the, and those guys and it was sortie war. And so we go off in a rainstorm so hard and it's rained so hard can, on a waste cat can hardly see the island hmm. and off we, off we go fly to fly uh to over to laos and listen listen to a controller give us a, a tack in position which we would drop our drop our bombs and come back into the onto the ship and pitch and rain at night i mean it's just there's nobody's going to get get you save your life but you yeah you know yeah yeah you know and it's 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 not it's it's not for the faint at heart and it's uh, you know it's just uh something you just learn to do and, and get through. That's a pretty good footage right there, the yeah, F4 coming in. There's another good shot.
let's uh, we'll cap off 114 here. So, looks like the X4. N- no- November 27th, 1972. That's his last flight off of the Kitty Hawk back to Miramar. As I understand it, then from uh, Thanksgiving to Christmas, I think he was home in St. Louis, and then from February to May of 73 i think that's when he attended top gun do you do you recall or did you guys not cross paths then um i yeah i remember he went to top gun um i was at went to vx4 um i didn't get to go at top gun because i got two kills they wouldn't let me go <laughs> you already know how to do it <laughs> like, huh? you know how to do this stuff you don't, you don't need to go to top gun. <laughs> oh my goodness <laughs> So anyway, and then and then he came back up to VX4 after Top Gun, I guess. Well, he, he had a second deployment in VF114, August 14th to January 16th of 1974. And again, that's a lot of uh, flights daily, two and three flights daily off the Kitty Hawk. Thank you so much, Denny. I, I so appreciate your time and your sharing of your stories. And um, it's just been a blessing to be able to talk to you and, and learn a little bit more about my dad. And I appreciate you sharing your stories and appreciate your time today. Thank you. Well, you're more than welcome. I, I, as I said before, I loved your dad. Well, thanks so much. He was so the much. best. Oh, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Yeah.